Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. You've got to get your expectations up. It's going to be good. Go, glory to God. Your need's going to be met tonight. Hallelujah. God's going to meet you. Pow! And it's going to happen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It already happened over 2,000 years ago, but now it's going to happen for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So get your expectations way up, way up, way up. Because you're going to get your blessing from God tonight. You're going to get your healing, whatever it is you need. God got it. And it's been made available to you through the shed blood of Christ. Hallelujah. So you ain't got to grovel. You ain't got to beg. You ain't got to, you know, you know, like Santa Claus, make a list, check it twice. Glory to God. Find out if you've been naughty or nice. Glory to God. You come in through the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I, man, I, I can go ahead and run right there. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. When is God good? When? On Tuesday. Thursday night. He's good when? All the time. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. And his goodness is expressed through the healing that he's made available through us through the shed blood of Christ. Amen. Well, welcome to Faith and Victory Church. Hallelujah. We're so glad that you made it out tonight. I, hope you, I, hope, I, I, I want you to keep your expectation high because God's going to move tonight. Glory to God. He's already moving right now, moved in praise and worship. He was moving, man, glory to God. So be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, stay ready. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, you know, Faith and Victory Church, Pastor Ed and Pastor Janie Taylor, glory to God, our wonderful pastors. Pastors uh, went to uh, Pigeon Forge for a uh, district meeting. And uh, he asked me if I would take the service for tonight. And, of course, I'm always excited about preaching because this is another chance for God to show himself strong with my assistance. I'm just assisting with Christ. You know, don't look to me to do nothing, okay? Don't look to me. Look to him. Glory to God. Because I can't, as Dad Hagen used to say, I can't heal a gnat's wing. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the healer. Amen. And we want you to put your trust and reliance on his ability to heal you and set you free. Amen. You know, glory to God. Hallelujah. So welcome again to Faith and Victory. And we pray that, it, it, or do we have any visitors, uh, first time visitors? All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We met this lovely couple, and uh, Sister Lyles, a friend of my wife there. Glory to God. Well, thank you so much for coming. And, and can we get your names once again for the congregation just so we can acknowledge your presence once again? Kelvin Jones and Beverly Bardner, Bernhardt, Bernhardt, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, let's, let's welcome them, amen. Thank you so much for coming and being with us tonight. Amen, praise God. Well, you know, I, I, I send you greetings, give you greetings from Pastor Ed and Pastor Janie. Thank you so much for coming. Please don't let this be your last time coming. You're going to get a great word tonight, but praise the Lord, my pastor, he gives out a great word 24-7, amen, and uh if you don't have a local church, a home church, we invite you to come and be with us here at Faith and Victory. We're a great church on the move. Glory to God. We love Jesus, and we love people. Amen? Amen. And we send our, send our best out to you, and we pray you come back and be with us. Amen? God bless you. So, um, tonight is a prayer and a healing and communion rally. And so, you know, if you, if you have a physical need in your body, whether your need be financial, whether your need be physical, whether your need be mental, Jesus can meet that need. Amen. Hallelujah. He's already done it for you on Calvary. Now you're just going to connect up to what he's already done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, just keep your expectations up. We're going to minister the word to you, and then we're going to lay hands on you. And bam! God's power is going to come on you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're going to go away from here. Better than you came in. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't believe that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm going to be saying some things to challenge you, to encourage you, to remind you of what Christ has done for you. And then we're just going to go forth, <laughs> lay hands on you, and glory to God. I'm not going to hit you like that. 
Praise God. So just go ahead and relax, all right? No, we're not going to no, hit, hit you like that unless the Lord tell me. Now, you know, that's going to be between you and him because I'm just being obedient to him. But he ain't never told me to do that, so I don't, I don't foresee that happening tonight. All right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So tonight we're talking about uh, healing, healing and wholeness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, it's going to be good. Amen. We want you to, we want you to, to take good notes. Hallelujah. Because even, even if the manifestation of your healing doesn't happen tonight, that doesn't mean that the healing power of God has not been administered to your physical body, causing an effect and a healing and a cure. Amen? So we want you to keep in mind that, you know, those things that we are sharing with you tonight, because you're going to need to be rehearsing those things, not only to receive your healing, but to keep your healing. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to discard you know, the teaching, because the teaching is what helps you to keep your healing. Amen? You know, that's what keep, helps to sustain you in those times where the devil wants to stick his head back in the room. Be like, anybody need me in here? And you just look right back up at him. No, we don't need you tonight. We don't need you any night. You can go ahead and hit the bricks. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Send that devil on his way. Yeah. You know, I had a surgery back in June, and, you know, just after the surgery, after post-op and everything like that, you know, you don't, you don't feel that great after they done, you know, carved through you and stuff, you know. And you wake up and you, you're on this medication. You're like, you can't even feel your head. You know, they got you on all this medication and stuff. And, you know, you know and, and things are going on. And you got, you're dealing with this pain and stuff where they just did this, you know, surgery and everything like that. And you're just sitting there like, ooh, this is not what I was expecting. You know, I was just expecting a little pinching feel. You know, this ain't nothing close to that. This is hurting. They said, do you need anything? Yeah, I need something to, some, something to deal with this pain that's, that's going on here. Well, we just gave you something. I need something else. I need some plus on that, you know. And there are going to be times when you're not, you're not full of faith and power. Glory to God. You, there are going to be times when you're not feeling it, you know. But then that's when you, the, the word's going to have to kick in. You're going to have to say what God say, amen. By his stripes I was healed, you know. You're going to have to say what Matthew 8 and 17 says, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took my infirmity and bare my sickness, and with his stripes I am healed. Amen? You're going to have to remind yourself in those times when the devil wants to stick his head in your room and be like, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm, I'm loading up some folks. Got about, got about 10 people out here. Uh, they say they know you. You know, why don't you come out here and see what they're talking about? No, Mr. Devil, with long life he shall satisfy me, and he will show me his salvation. Hallelujah. You got to tell the devil what the Bible say. You got to tell the devil what Jesus said. Amen. You know, Jesus did, you know, when the devil came to Jesus, tempted him, you know, those 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus out in the wilderness, he's hungry, you know, he, he, he's longing for some Applebee's or something, you know. The devil say, hey, uh, I, I, Turn these, bri turn these uh, bricks into bread here, you know. But Jesus didn't come and say, man, that sounds like a good idea. I think I'm going to put some butter on them too. No, Jesus didn't say that. What did he say? He said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. Amen? You got, to, you got to remind the devil what the word of God says. That's where your strength comes from. That's where your provision comes from. That's where your healing comes from. The word of God. Announce the word of God over your physical body. This statement has been made, and I, I believe it bears repetition. It says, little, little faith, little power. Little word, little power. If your word that you know is small, your ability to defend against the devil is small. So the more word of God you have in your arsenal, the more for, internal fortitude that you build up for yourself, that you, that you create a defense. You know, it's football season now, and everybody likes a strong defense. You got to have a strong defense. Defend against the pass. Defend against the run, you know. But you know, this word of God creates a strong defense for the onslaught of the devil because he is the enemy, and he wants to kill you. Yeah, yes, you. I know you bake pies and you real nice to people and you give people cups of sugar and stuff like that to come to the door because, you know, they run a little low because they didn't go to the grocery store before they got home. Now they come over to your house with a, can I get a cup of sugar? Of course you can have a cup of sugar. 
leans squat duly when it comes to the devil. He don't care nothing about that. He care about that word. He come for the word's sake, the Bible says. And if you don't have no word, you don't have no fight. It's always great to receive a miracle working, powerful healing. But are you going to be able to keep it? That word is going to be able to sustain you in order for you to be able to keep your healing. You may experience a mighty move of God. The, the, the hand of God may come on you. Bow. Healing instantly. Bow. Thank you, Lord. You shout and dance. You run, kick the naps out the carpet and everything. And glory to God. You know, you got your healing. Oh, I got it. I got it. You dance all night. But then when you get home, the devil's sitting there waiting on you. He's sitting there waiting on you. You know, that was a pretty good dance you had. I know some folks did a dance just like that. Let me see if you're different. What you going to do now? I'm going to touch you with a little bit of that pain you had. What you going to do now? Now you can't dance. You be thinking, oh, he got me. He got me. Yeah, because he got you. Because you ain't have no word to sustain you in those times when he come back. Because he will come back. But you're going to have to send him on his way, amen? amen? I'm preaching already. I'm preaching already. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine, the son, and the soul, and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We thank you, Father, that your word is piercing right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for open ears and, 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 and receptive spirits. Glory to God. We thank you that, that we'll be open to the, your preached word. Glory to God. And we thank you, Father, that you'll use my mouth, process thoughts through my mind, Father. I decrease now that you might increase in me. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word will flow freely with, with, without reserve. Glory to God. Let it flow freely and bold, and let boldness be upon my, my words, Father. And let, let the seriousness of, of this topic resonate in the hearts of your people. Let it, let it hit their ears and, and saturate all the way down through their spirit, Father, so that they can retain and hold the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God. The, the, the preached word is what sets captives free. Hallelujah. And I just pray and thank you right now, Father, that your word is flowing freely. It'll have free course tonight. And it'll just penetrate every part of our being. In Jesus' name. And everybody in agree with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just hit the ground running, boy. And it's, you know, it, ooh. Because, because you want to get this thing out so bad. You know. I, I, it, that didn't hit up on me until I, until I stood up. Because I was thinking, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on you to do this thing now. And I felt a little, you know, yeah. But then when I stood up, and that anointing hit, I'm ready. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As a minister of the gospel, you always, you don't want to get, you don't want to get to the point where, you know, well, I can do that. You know, I can do that. You know, get, get comfortable. I'm, I'm never comfortable. I'm always, you know, on edge about ministering God's word because see this this affects the lives of people this serious stuff very serious stuff it amazes me that people get up and stand up in pulpits and their life is not right it's just raggedy and shabby you know they they doing all kind of this and all kind of that sleeping with this person sleeping with that person doing all kind of immoral things and then they stand up and want to minister God's word whoo I can't do it I can't do it. I value this anointing way too much for that. Because this anointing, this anointing, this anointing, whoo, man, ain't, ain't, ain't no woman worth that. Ain't no dude worth that. Nobody worth that. This anointing, being able to walk in the things of God, being able to walk full of power in the anointing, ain't nothing, 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 nothing worth that. Nothing. So I live clean. I live upright. I love my wife. I love my children. I love people. 
I walk in love with all people. I can honestly say I don't have nothing against nobody. I might not like what you did, but I ain't going to hold it. You ain't worth it. You ain't that important. Can I get somebody to say, say amen? amen? Hallelujah. You just not that important that I'm going to let you affect my relationship with God like that. I ain't going to do it. And you say, well, well, I remember what she did to me. That wasn't right. She did this, this, this. Well, She ain't worth it. She ain't worth your peace. She ain't worth your healing. She ain't worth your finances. Oh, you start getting hit in the pocket. You start seeing your money roll out like, a, like you got a hole in your pocket. You've ever had a hole in your pocket and you go in there and you're like, man, I had some money. What, 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 what in the world? And then you sit there and stick your finger through there and you're like, oh, man. That's just, you just might as well put five holes in your pocket carrying resentment and bitterness and stuff around. Not only do it affect your pocket, it affect your body too. It affect your body so much it kill you, take you up out of here. I done seen it happen to a few folks. Kill you. So as you're standing in faith and believing God for your healing, I ain't even got to my notes yet. As you're standing in faith and believing God for your healing, remember there may be somebody you need to get something right with. You may need to go back and apologize. Say, you know, what I did to you back in 74, that wasn't right. Uh, now I really shouldn't have done that. You know, I, I said you shouldn't have worn them platform heels with them bell bottoms. And, uh, you know, we fell out about that thing. And uh, I just want to tell you I'm sorry. You know, whatever the Lord tell you to do now, it might have not happened in 74. It might have happened in 84. Or it might have happened in 94. Or it might have happened in 2004. Or it might have happened in 44. But it don't matter when it happened. Be willing to get it right. Don't let that situation carry you to your grave. Take you out of here. Because see, people don't think that, you know, harboring bitterness and resentment in your heart has an effect on you receiving healing today. You know, you might have said, well, Lord, forgive me. And the Lord did forgive you. But he may put another requirement on you that you get it right with that person. Amen? amen? Somebody say amen up in here. Amen. We preaching truth tonight. Hallelujah. You want some lies, you got to go somewhere else. Because we just preaching the truth tonight. Amen. amen? That's what's going to be coming from this pulpit pit tonight. Truth. Amen. amen? Because it is the truth that sets you free. Hallelujah. If the Lord ain't talking to you about nobody, you know, that don't apply to you. Amen? amen. So don't sweat it. You know, don't think I'm just talking to you. Oh, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. You know, well, I am if it applies. If you see that, if you see that shoe and it get, it, it, it just sit right on your foot like a custom glove. Go ahead and own it, own it, get it right. Turn to your neighbor, say own it, and get it right. Amen. Hallelujah. You're gonna have to own when the Lord talking to you, cause see, cause see, whom the Lord loveth, He chastens. Glory to God. Who the Lord loves, he corrects. So, Because he don't want you to be taken out with something like that. Amen. Or anything like that. Amen? Amen? So this is for your good. Amen? Amen? This is not to put you on the spot. Or make this other person forget the other person. What they're going to say. Or how they react. You know, you go to apologize and get it right. You know, so so and so. Sister Exit. You know, I, I'll use a generic name. Exit. You know, so, you know, we ain't talking about nobody in here. Sister Exit, you know, I know what I did. and Yeah, I, know, I remember what you did. You know, you talked all that to me, and then you told all the people, and then you did such and such and such and such. And I tell you one thing, I'm so glad you decided you're going to get it right because you know you was wrong. And, 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 and I was telling somebody the other day, don't worry about what they do. Don't worry about how they how they blow things, you know, because see, they, they, that's the devil's attempt at trying to keep you in that, holding that. So well, I was going to apologize, but I'm, I ain't saying nothing now. You know, you can go straight to <laughs> your mind filled it in. I ain't have to say a word. Don't let, don't, don't let the devil use that person to do it to you. You just go on ahead, get it right, or you know, let me, let me say I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, please, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. 
you know, I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. Please forgive me. And if they still yammer on and yammer on, let's let them go on. Well, I'm going to have to go now. But just remember, you know, I'm sorry. And, and, and one day, one day maybe you can forgive me. You know, I, that may not happen tonight, but it's okay. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. And love them at a distance. You ain't got to make that trip every week. As long as it's settled in your heart and you, your conscience is clear before the Father and you did what you were supposed to do, let that person stew in that if they want to. That's not, that's not a, how they feel is not affecting you. What they think about you is not affecting you. Amen? Amen. You cannot curse whom God is blessed. And when you're walking in the blessing, glory to God. Can't nobody take it. Can't nobody take your healing. It's yours. You owned it. Amen? Amen. I ain't going to charge you nothing for that. That was free too. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's see here. Glory to God. My computer went to sleep. I've been preaching so long. Hallelujah. You got to load it back up. All right, so we're talking about healing and wholeness. Amen? You know, you can get, he you can get healed and not be made whole. Right. What do you mean? Well, we can come up, you can come up, healing power of God is made manifest, goes into your body, affects the healing and the cure, bam, you receive what you needed from God. Say, you, say for example, you had... Uh, you had one eye you couldn't see out of. Boom. God clears that eye up. You see, see perfectly. You were healed. But you know what? One leg is still shorter than the other. You're still, you're still a little bit in lack. You got healed, but you weren't made whole. When Jesus, when Jesus healed the ten lepers, one came back. And he was made whole. We're going to look at that too. So we're talking about healing versus whole. Both are good. It's good when you get healed. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. When you get your healing, that's good. But being made whole is better. Hallelujah. So we're going to be talking about healing and wholeness. Amen. Because we want you, Jesus came that you might be made whole. Hallelujah. Finances in shape. Body in shape. Mind right. Glory to God. Jesus is interested in all that. Family relationships are right. Glory to God. Jesus is interested in all of that. He wants your whole life being made whole. Hallelujah. Amen? And we're going to look at that tonight. Hallelujah. So, I hadn't given any scripture to read out yet or anything like that. Glory to God. So let's, let's turn to that scripture we just made reference to. Luke 17 and 12. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. And I want y'all to take good notes. Hallelujah. Just like you was in, you know, you're taking your, your doctorate course or whatever. I want you to take good notes tonight. Because I'd like to tell you in class, you will be tested on this material. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not by me. I don't have a test for you tonight, but the devil, he waiting on the other side of this door. He ready to give you a test. We want everybody in here to pass with flying colors, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to pass with flying colors. Amen. Hallelujah. So take good notes tonight. Hallelujah. And remember, it's going to be on the, on the World Wide Web, at, on our Facebook, uh, not on Facebook, but on our YouTube, uh, FBC, uh, Faith and Victory. So if you want to come back and and review it and go back over it. I encourage you to do that because it will just help to encourage and stimulate your faith even the more. Amen? Hallelujah. So let me, let me get my Bible turned to the right page. Hallelujah. Let me put my, put my readers on. Hallelujah. So we're looking at 17 and 12 of Luke. Hallelujah. Talking about these 10 lepers. Amen? When you, say, when you have it, say Amen. 17 and 12. Hallelujah. And there entered into a certain village. And as he entered into a certain village, just talking about Jesus, Jesus entered the village, and there met him ten men that were lepers that stood afar off. And they, lift, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when they saw them, he said unto him, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. 
And it came to pass, as they, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He wasn't, e he wasn't even supposed to get healed under this old covenant. Jesus came for the Jews. And, you know, we see that we see Jesus has, have an interaction with Samaritans and other, other races of folks. You know, I guess the Samaritans were kind of like half-breeds or whatever. And the Jews didn't want to have nothing to do with them. You know, they can, but kind of, you know, like step, step can, you know. You kind of turn your nose up, turn, turn your nose up. Oh, I know nobody in here would do that. You know, everybody love everybody in here, amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Tell your face you're happy. Smile. Hallelujah. So, you know, they didn't, Jews didn't have any dealings with the Samaritans. And so, you know, these, these ten lepers, they got healed, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't, they knew, they knew who Jesus was. They acknowledged who he was. And God in his infinite grace and mercy acknowledged, who, acknowledged the fact that they had faith in his ability to heal them. And so they, they tapped in to a new covenant principle, which is walking by faith. They tapped in. And so they were able to receive because they were walking in, in the operation of the new covenant that Jesus was ushering, uh, ushering the, the, the people into at that time. So nine, ten got healed, one, one came back and gave thanks. Well, why was that, why is that important to come back and give thanks? Well, it became really important after the fact because, you know, the Bible says, and into his gates with thanksgiving, into his course with praise. You know, you tap in with your thanksgiving and praise. Not only did he receive healing, the, if you understand anything about leprosy, leprosy is a very debilitating, a physically debilitating, you know, disease. Uh, you know, you can, you know, you'd be going along, your finger fall off, or your foot will fall off, or your ear will fall off, or something like that. You could be jacked up, you know. And you know, the ten got healed, but one was made whole. Well, what does that mean, he was made whole? Not only was he cured of the leprosy, but, you know, the missing ear come back, missing finger come back, missing toe come back. You know, your, 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 your face straightened back up. You know, that's being made whole. It's good to be healed, but it's better to be made whole. The Bible says he was made whole. Amen? Jesus ministered under the old covenant as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. He did not come as God. He come as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit, walking upright under the old covenant to show us how that we should do. Amen? He was God, but he did not come as God. He did not come in, in, in his divinity. He laid all that aside. And came as a man. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. See that's you know. Because people, people say well that's why. That's why Jesus was able to do what he could do. You know because he was God. But he didn't come as God. He came as a man. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. To show us what we are to do. As men. As we are engrafted in. And we receive him as Lord and Savior. We become sons of God. And eligible to walk in the same anointing. And the same power that he walked in. He said, not only, not only these things are you going to do, but greater than these shall you do. Wow. Jesus opened blind eyes, raised people from the dead, healed people from leprosy, opened stopped ears, you know, raised the dead. Anybody here raised the dead lately? But Jesus said, we shall do greater works than these. Well, how is that going to happen? Hmm. Let that marinate on you, settle down on you a little bit. Acts 10 and 38, turn there. See, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to walk in the office that he was in. I'm way over here. Come on, Jeff. Anybody getting anything? Amen. Acts 10 and 38. 
I could quote it, but I won't. I'm going to read it. Acts 10 and 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen? Healing was available to the Jews under the Old Covenant. And we can find that here over in uh, Psalms, Psalms 107 and 20, where it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Not only is that an old, old covenant reality, but we can walk in it now too. Because what, what was contained in the old, we can also walk, excuse me, we can also walk in as well. As well as what's in the New Testament. So anything that you find in the Old Testament, we can walk in as well. Amen? Hallelujah. And then over in 2 Second, Second Chronicles, turn there. We'll look at that, that real quick. 2 Chronicles 30 and 20. We, we will be hitting the scriptures tonight. Hallelujah. Because the power is in what? Word. The word of God. Amen? So in order, and as we stated before, little, little, little word, little power. A lot of word, a lot of power. Amen? So we're turning to Second Chronicles, the 30th chapter. I'm going to get on over here myself. 30th chapter, 20th verse. You know, even in the Old Covenant, they had, they had a covenant of healing. But we're talking, about, we're talking about being healed and having wholeness. Amen? And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Hmm. Luke 6.18. Yeah, we run the scripture tonight, baby. And it's good, good, good. I'm gonna set you free tonight. Hallelujah. Because this is I'm, I'm giving you scripture so you can so you can so you can connect your faith up to that. Because you you connect your faith up to this this word, and then you get to exercise and walk in it. Because it's, it's yours. You own it. You own this word. This is for me. It's mine. This it's God's word to God's people. And if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you acknowledge this as God's unrefutable word, and it cannot be, it is, not, it is, it is infallible, and it is without error, and that it applies to you, you can own everything that's in here. You can accept it by faith and walk it out. Amen. And walk in it. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we are, let's see, Luke 6 and 18. It says, and they were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the multitude sought to touch him, for there went out virtue of him, and he healed them all. This is before Jesus went to the cross. God was still healing his covenant people before Jesus went to the cross. But you know, the Bible says that we have been given a better covenant based on better promises. Let's look at that over in Hebrews 8 and 6. Hebrews 8 and 6. I don't know about you, but this is, this is lighting my spirit man up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember, keep your expectation high. We ain't got but a few more scriptures to share with you, and then we're going we're gonna to turn this power loose on you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we've got to have a foundation of the word of God because you need something that's going to be able to keep you and hold you. Amen? Hebrews 8 and 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, he's talking about Jesus, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which is established upon better promises. Well, in the Old Testament, if they were receiving healing, what makes the new covenant better? The thing that makes the new covenant better is that it's God's will and desire for all of us to walk in wholeness. Amen? See, the early church didn't have the revelation 
of wholeness. Because, see, their expectation would have been different when they came to Jesus. All they knew that, that, that they could get healed of whatever infirmity or disease or whatever it was that they had at the time. Whether they had a, had a broken finger or whether they had a, a cold or a flu or, you know, or something, you know, they had cancer or something, whatever they had going on. You know, they knew that if they, if they got to Jesus, they could, they could get that problem solved. But how much more does the Lord want us, our whole life, to be set back in the right place? Amen? Have your marriage restored. Have your children, you know, doing well. Have your finances doing well. You're not, you're not borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Amen? He wants everything in order. He wants everything whole in your life. Amen? And so that's the thing that we want to stress to you tonight. Hallelujah. Part of the wholeness, part of this wholeness is to say no to a lifestyle of sin. You know, Jesus said to, to many, he said, after they, re, after they received their healing, he said, go and sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon you. You know, he didn't say that to everybody. You know, so it's, you know, there's some folks that's going to have a tendency, you know, to go back into the, the liquor house or something. You know, they got, they, they got their liver healed and they say, well, you know, I'm going to go get another drink. No. <laughs> the Lord didn't heal you for you to go back in, be a dog returning to his vomit. He wants you to turn from that wickedness. You say, well, you know, the Lord healed me of lung cancer. I'm getting ready to go get some new pores. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> what? You get ready to do what? Oh, now, talk to me. <laughs> Heal you of lung cancer. You want to go get some, you want, you want to go get a box. You know? Man, boy, it's going to feel good to smoke this without this, this lung problem, boy. Woo. I love them cigarettes. No, no, the Lord didn't hear you for that now. No, no, no. We're going to go ahead and set this thing right for you now. You know, Jesus said, go and sin no more. You say, well, ain't a sin to smoke? Yeah, but you're killing yourself. And anything, that, <laughs> anything that's defiling the temple of God, you need to, you need to refrain from that. You know, that's just, that's, that's just as much for like, you know, you, you, eat, you, know, you got diabetes because you eat too much pot. You know, you love, you know, you love Kool-Aid and, you love Kool-Aid and, and, and Jolly Ranchers, you know. I mean, the Jolly Ranchers ain't nothing but a whole of Kool-Aid, you know, in my, in my opinion. You know, they just, they just put a lot of sugar and just put it in a Jolly Rancher and just put some pack of Kool-Aid together. You know, that's Jolly Rancher. That's, that's Kool-Aid. You know, you let that Jolly Rancher dissolve in a glass of water, be Kool-Aid. You know, but at any rate, you know, your body's all out of kilter, you know. Because you love sugar, you know, and then the Lord here, you know, get your, get your numbers back, get your A1C right, you know, as I'm 45 and having to do all, you know, they start wanting to test everything. Now, you, you are a number in the medical field. You know, your A1C is this, your such and such is this, you know. They give you a whole list of numbers and stuff. You know, you need to between, be between this number and this number. Okay. All right. Okay. Take this, this, and this so your numbers can be this. Okay. I got you. And so all you, now, all you, all you are now is, is a number in the medical profession. You're just trying to reach the right number. My A1C is such and such, you know. But, you know, being healed is one thing, but wholeness is a totally different thing. Go and sin no more. Amen? Amen. If you don't get anything else, get that. Go and sin no more. Don't, don't, re don't be like the dog returning to his vomit, you know. And that's a nasty thing. You, you just put that up and you're going back to it. Well, that's what some of us do, you know? That's what the Lord sees. He's like, man, you sucking that vomit up. That's nasty. But anyway, you heard me. You heard me, right? Glory to God. Live right. Live holy. Amen? Now, we see that over in John 8 and 11. 
You don't have to turn there. I'm going to turn there and we're going to read it. Because some of you might think I made that up. John 8 and 11. Yeah, Jesus said, go and sin no more. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question him, seeking of him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit. No, nope, that's Mark. That's Mark. Sorry. Oh, wait a minute. That don't sound like what I wanted. John 8 and 11. Let's try that again. All righty. <clears throat> All right. This is about the woman called an adultery. All right. All right. Let's go to the right, right verse. Let's go up to... Okay, third verse. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had sent her in the midst, they, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in, the, in adultery. Where the man at? Well, you know, he's standing out to the side there, but he, he, said, he said he didn't want to be named in this. I'm just reading in between the lines. You know, it's not the stuff you see. It's the stuff you don't see, too. You know, they say, yeah, get her. He's like, yeah, I got my rock ready. Fool, you need to be in there with her. You was in there. She, she couldn't adulterize by herself. She had to have some help there. But anyway, moving right along. This one was taken into adultery, the very act, the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. I have my stone. But what says that? Then they said, tempted him, that they might have, have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And so when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, What is he that is without sin among you? Let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Uh-huh. You don't need nobody to preach to you sometimes. You know you did wrong. Well, there's a little side note there. I ain't going to charge enough for that either. Went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And Jesus had lifted up himself and saw, saw none but the woman. And he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So, Jesus must have saw something in her or knew something about her by the witness of the Spirit that he needed to tell her, you know, don't be thinking you can go get your freak on. Go say it no more. You know, I know, I know you like Charlie, Bob, and Jim, but you need to leave them alone or you're going to be catching rocks. Amen? It's all right to say amen. Hallelujah. It's tight, but it's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you know what? Go and sin no more. You know, that she was about to have one of the first Rolling Stones concerts. Yeah, I know the Stones. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. About to know them closer personal. Uh-huh. You know it. So guess what? God expects us to turn from wickedness. The natural tendency of man is sinful, but that's why Jesus came and died on the cross, that we might be redeemed. And then the Holy Spirit was given to indwell us in order to keep us straight. Amen? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Say that with me. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. He lives big in me. Say that. Say, he lives big in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit has been given to enable us to live right. Without him, our strength to stand is very small. You can't stand effectively against the onslaught of the devil without the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why he came. He said, I, 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 need, to, I need to, he said, he said, I need to go. Jesus finished his work. 
they was they were, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit was having this conversation. They said, "Now, after Jesus come back, we're going to Holy Spirit. We're going to send you down there because you know they got, they still mess, they still going to be messed up if they ain't, if they ain't got you with them. So you need you need to you need to be there with them, help them, show them, give them give them the insight that they need." The Bible says in John 16, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He's on the inside of you. Say, he's on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing is that one or more physical or mental ailments in your body that has reversed, has reversed back to normal by the miracle working power of God. Wholeness encompasses all of that but also includes many other facets in one's life, like your finances, relationships, you know, things of that nature, just the wholeness, your whole life is covered. You know, I was at my son's game Friday night, uh, and, uh, you know, you see people, you know, and you, your heart just goes out to them, you know. If you have the love of God in your heart and you see somebody, you know, that has, has a, has a physical ailment or a physical challenge, you know, going on with them, your heart just goes out to them. You know, but do you realize, I want you to realize something, that, you know, that's the compassion and the love of God that you're sensing. Amen? But just because you have that compassion and your heart goes out to this person does not mean that's a leading of the Holy Spirit to go and minister to that person. It's not. No, it's not. Why do I say that? Well, if you recall in Scripture, Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda, and there were uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of people out there in that area that were sick and ailing. And, of course, they were operating still up under the old covenant where an angel came down at a certain time, certain season. Nobody knew what day or what time or what hour it was going to be. But the angel come down, stirred the water some kind of way, and then it became a foot race. You know, whoever can get in first, bam. Only one person now. Only one person out of hundreds, maybe thousands of people in this area. And they're all just kind of camped out, you know, around this pool, waiting for the angels to come down and trouble this water. You know, shake it, stir it, or maybe a geyser or something, you know, shot up. or You know, whatever the case may be. You know, it was a, it was a supernatural event because it couldn't have just been a geyser because, you know, that happens Whenever, but you don't get healed by jumping in something that's a geyser. That's not a natural occurrence, you know, because if that was the case, everybody would be camped out by the geyser. You know, just jump in, whoo, I'm healed, you know. Everybody would be doing that, but that wasn't the case. So the angel come down, trouble the water, first person in, gets healed. Jesus goes through this area, passes by all these ailing and sick people, and heals one man. Why is that? Jesus said, I do only those things that I see my father do. See, so Jesus didn't pick and choose who he was going to heal. The father chose that. Which it was in his own good pleasure. Amen? It's his will for all men to be saved. It's his will for all men to be healed. But we have access to that now by faith. But they didn't have access to that back then. They didn't have access to this word that we have now. Because that's what makes this covenant better. Built upon better promises, the Bible says. And you know, I've seen this, I seen this young man. And you know, he kind of looked like the, the, if you remember the, uh, the Jerry Lewis picture, you know, that they used to have. Uh, you know, the caricature for his foundation or whatever his you know, I forget what they used to call it. Um, the Jerry's kids or whatever, and they had, a, they had his face on there, and it was kind of a side view, and his mouth was open like that, and, you know, he saw the big Jerry Lewis teeth. And then that's kind of like the way this little boy, this, this young man looked, and, you know, you know he, was, he was physically, you know, challenged. And, you know, uh, I guess you would say he was, uh, you know, mentally disabled, you know, because he was drooling all over himself, and, you know, was unaware of, you know, how he was acting or whatever. You know, he had somebody care, caring for him. And my heart just went out to him. You know, I just, I just thought to myself, you know, I just want to go over there and lay hands on him and break that thing off of him. But, you know, it wasn't up to me. 
it, it was not up to me. So I, I had to check. I had to check. You know, Lord, do you want me to go lay hands on this young man? I had to, I had to, I had to go through this, you know, internally, me and the Lord. You know, and I didn't, get a, I didn't get a clearance to go lay hands on him, so I didn't. You know, but that, that did not, that did not uh, release me from the fact that I still wanted to. You know, I still wanted to. So we as Christians have to be aware of compassion versus the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because you can get the two intertwined and find yourself praying amiss. You know, praying for people. And, you know, case in point, there was another gentleman that I uh, encountered one day. And I, I used to see him, you know, uh, down on Lawndale in Greensboro, down there at the old Harris Teeter that used to be down there, Cornwallis. And, no, it was Cornwallis uh, at that Harris Teeter down there. And, uh, you know, the Lord just prompted in my spirit, gave me a word. That's how I knew that it was, it was something I was supposed to do. The Lord would give me, give me a word. He said, go ask that man this, will thou be made whole? I said, okay, that ain't how I talk. You know, one of the ways you know God's talking to you, he used language you don't normally use in your normal speech. You know, take good notes. You will be tested on this material. He used language that you don't normally use. He'll say something to you that, you know, that's not your process of thinking. So he said, go ask him, will thou be made whole? So I wrestle. Sometimes you, just, you sometimes you just be like, man, I really, I got something I need to be doing other than going to pray for this dude, you know. You know, just, that's just the human side of things. But, you know, you want to please God, right? Amen. 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 You want to walk in the fullness of God. So you have to be willing, you have to be willing and open and, and a vessel that God can use in order to get more. He who is faithful in little will also be that faithful in that which is much. Amen. So you have to say, okay, you have to put yourself aside and say, I'm okay. Okay, Lord, I'm going to go pray for this man. So I went to this man. I said, hey, will that be made whole? He said, huh? I said, I said, can I pray for you? Will you be made whole? And he was like, no. Okay. Because he already said he didn't want it. So what did that mean? What did that mean? That mean God was che checking your faithfulness. He was checking you out. It wasn't about him. God already knew what he was going to do. Because he liked getting a check. And being able to, you know, depend on other people. You know, some people are like that. You know, you see people holding these signs up. We'll work for food. You say, hey, man, I got a job for you. Nah, I can't do that, you know. You know, they're holding up a sign, you know. I'm hungry. I, this one guy... Man, I, you know, I don't normally do this, but I, I just check myself, you know, to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm doing, you know, trying to be, have compassion towards people and not just thinking everybody's a bum. Yeah. I seen this one guy, he said, you know, hungry, please help. I said, okay. I said, hey, man. Uh, I went over to the McDonald's, got him a double cheeseburger and some fries, you know, took it over there to him. I said, here you go. Here you go, friend. He was like, oh, thank you. He took his food, stuck it in his little, little bag, held a sign back up. What was he supposed to do? He was supposed to eat that food because he's hungry. He said, I'm hungry. He didn't say, I'll be hungry later. You know, could you, could you get me something for later? He said, I'm hungry now. I'm starving. Okay, gotcha. I just mentally logged that. Okay, gotcha. But listen, there are times when the Lord will be, be leading you. Amen? And then you're going to have to be willing to do what God say. Amen? Because see, after you get your healing, he's going to want you to give it back out. He's going to want you to lay hands on somebody too. Because as somebody laid hands on you, you go lay hands on somebody else. You say, well, yeah, that's why, yeah, that's why, that's why I said that. Because as you receive, you give out. Amen? Amen. Be willing. Say, Lord, I, I, Lord, after I receive, after this healing manifests, I'm going to lay hands on everybody. Amen? Amen. 
have that mindset. The Lord may not want you to lay hands on everybody, but be willing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting anything? We're about to wrap this thing up. I know you're thinking, well, when? I ain't in charge. Do you want what God got for you or you, you want to do something else? You know? Jesus gave the qualifier in his ministry. I only do the things I see the Father do. And that's found over in John 5 and 19. So you can't just randomly think to yourself, well, I'm just going to do this or I'm just going to do that in the name of the Lord. You have to be led by the Spirit. Amen? The Bible says, but as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Amen? <clears throat> Jesus had compassion. Don't be foolish and make the statement that Jesus wasn't moved with compassion, you know, at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus always had compassion. Jesus had the spirit without measure, which consists of love. Amen? And love has, one of the components of love is compassion. Amen? So don't think as he walked by those hundreds, maybe thousands of people, that, you know, he just didn't care. Jesus cares. We are his kids. We care. He cares. But guess what? Now we're under a better covenant with better promises. All you have to do is you can access your healing by faith through the word of God. Amen? Amen. You don't have to wait on a special troubling or a move of the water for the angel to come down or, or prophet so-and-so to come and pray for you. You can get in this word, find what it says about you concerning your healing, access it by faith, and bam, you got it. Amen? Hallelujah. Did you get anything? Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.